Okay, this other sexual offense, offense that he did was called the Green Man. Um, all, after he got out, um, almost about in November of 1964, almost three years um, after he spent, after his release of jail, he was arrested again. And this time the charges were much more serious than breaking, entering, and measuring prospective models. Um, he would... He would act like he was like a repairman. He would, as he was driving, he would just be driving somewhere. He'd be like, oh, I really want to have sex right now. And then he would stop, go to the apartment complex. He would find a woman's room, because it had the little, um, the sheet. And he would go up there. He would knock on the door and be like, um, hi, um, the superintendent sent me up to fix your pipe, fix your plumbing. He would make up anything, like uh, paint your paint your uh, room, and all that. And um, if they let him in, which most of the time they did, because people are stupid, um, he would then fondle, like have sex with her or something. Like um, there was this one time where one woman went in. He stuffed her underwear in her mouth and tied her in a spread eagle position. To the bedpost with her with her clothes on, um, he would kiss her and fondle her, and um, he, I remember, I think this one he asked, um, "How do I get out of this apartment?" And then he told her, "Just be quiet, be quiet for ten, 10 minutes, or I'll kill you," you know. But he, I don't think he ever had the intention of killing anybody. I don't think he would. Um, he would then apologize and flee. Um, he was. He, cl he got caught, but he got caught, and um, he claimed, he told the cops that he did about, assaulted about 300 women ar in, around Boston and all that. Um, yeah, and then after that, he would later confess to being the Boston Strangler, which was totally random. But yeah, that was, that was the Green Man. It was called the Green Man because he would, when he was always, he was caught wearing green pants. He always did it in green pants. Um, yeah, that was a green man. Um, he ended up going to court, uh, not for the Boston, Sh and he was trialed not for the Boston Strangler murders, but for the green man rapes. Um, his attorney at the time, F. Lee Bailey, his intentions were to make the jury believe that he was insane so he could be sent to a mental hospital instead of being given the chair. Um, he was, Albert was found guilty of the Green Man rapes because he had full control and understanding of what was going on. He knew that he was breaking the law. He had full control. He could have stopped whenever he wanted to because he had control because he made the plan. He made the plan to act like a repairman, go into an apartment complex, say, I'm here to fix your pipes, and then fondle her and have sex with her and kiss her. That was all planned. That was all controlled. You know, if someone without someone not having control is like someone, if you're walking down the street and you see a girl and you know she's cute and all that, and you're thinking of sex, not having control in that situation would be to jump on her and start having sex with her. You know, he had full control. He could. He planned it. He knew what he was doing. Not he. Emotions weren't rushing through his head, you know. Um, but uh, he found he was found guilty. He was sentenced to life in prison. He was sent he was sent to a prison, and ironically, he was reunited by uh, George Nasser again. Um, he did. He was kind of a walking target because you know he he was the Boston Strangler. He was accused as the Boston Strangler, and. Um, you know, he was he was really stupid. He would make chokers, like jewelry chokers, as a gag, as a joke. And you know, that's what made him a walking target because people were thinking like, you know, you killed all those old ladies, you killed people's mothers and stuff. Man, that could have been my mother, that could have been my daughter, that could have been my sister, you know? So people were like, the inmates were thinking like, you know, if I take him out, I'm a hero. And, um... That is actually what happened in the end. 
Um, in the end, he was uh, stabbed. He was stabbed to death. Uh, four stabs to the heart, I believe. Um, which was ironic, kind of ironic, because that same night he told, he called his old psychiatrist or therapist or something, and he said, please come down and see me. I need to tell you who the real Boston Strangler is. And um, that night he died. That night he died. And um, that's that's the gist of what happened. Um, yeah, that's what happened. When it comes to um, Albert DeSalo's psychological profile, um, he does fall under the specific profile of a serial killer that was presented by uh, Ab Abshish, Abshi, um, which stated that most white males, most serial killers are white males in their 20s and 30s and they target strangers around their home or workplace, which Albert did, considering he was, he was like in his 20s during the Green Man and the uh, Measuring Man, and then I think he just hit there, I think he was like 33 when he confessed the Boston Strangler, and he focused around Boston for all of them. Um, and also according to the criminologist Eric, Eric Hickey, 88% um, of serial killers are, are male and 85% are Caucasian which Albert falls under both, so he contributes to both of those percentages. Um, when it comes to the particular method of the killing, um, I'm honestly not sure about Albert. I still, I don't, I have my doubts that he even did any of them. Actually, you know what, I, I know he did two. I know he did the Sophie Clark, the murder and rape, and he did the Joan Groff murder and rape. But um, if I had to say who did it, I would say um, Clark Edward Tracy. Yep, Clark Edward Tracy. Because his method was, um, he would strangle women, old women. Um, actually, he did strangle a couple younger, but mostly it was old women. Um, and when he, he, he would tie, whatever he strangled, he would make it into a bow. Uh, he would pose the body in, in a sexual position. Um, then he would make the, how, the apartment or wherever look like it was robbed everything, drawers open, stuff on the floor, but in the end, nothing was taken. Nothing would ever be taken. Um, which is that exactly what happened to the first five. He, yeah, first five. So I would have to say Clark Edward Tracy did, did that stuff, and that's the method that he did. Um, so back to Albert. Um, his adolescence life, his adolescence was horrible. Um, he was uh, physically abused and by his father, and he was exposed to sex at a really early age. Um, his father would bring prostitutes and make his children watch as they had sex. Also, Albert sold himself to homosexuals at the age of 10. His first sex sexual experience was at 10. Um, what else? What else was I going to say? Um, I think he also he wanted to be famous. And I think that might be also like a little bit to do with um, his family, home life. He, I don't think he ever got the attention he deserved as a child, especially considering the fact that he was sold to slavery at one point for $9. It shows that he was not given any attention or love. Um, I think, like when he did The Measuring Man, I think he felt really good because he was someone else. You know, he was, his name, he was Johnson. He was a guy who worked for a modeling agency who could get anyone. He tricked women to bed. He could get anybody. And, like, when, even when he confessed about it, he was like, you know, I know I'm not a good-looking guy. I don't really, I never have any good luck. But, you know, it felt really good to outsmart those upper-class people, you know. So, the attention. Um, he... He wanted that attention because he never got it. And I think that's why he confessed to the Boston Strangler. Strangling. Um, what else? Also, the, the whole sexual stuff, the sex, also created that sexual obsession he had. Um, his wife, Ermgard, claimed, and claimed that he would want to have sex with her five to six times a day. And he would freq frequently masturbate, even after having sex. Um, and it got so bad for him that he would feel pain if he didn't. You know, it just didn't. If if he didn't have sex, he would feel horrible because he would feel this pain, a pain, a burning pain in his abdomen, 
and that meant he had to have sex. So it must have been, I think it had to be that bad to where you create um, a feeling that you have when you're not doing something, you know? I guess it's kind of like when you relapse from like a drug, you know, if you go cold turkey or something, you know, you'll some people shake like crazy and all that, you know? So maybe it was like that, but nonetheless, it was really bad for him. Um, he was a, del a delinquent, I can't pronounce that word. Um, he did a lot of crimes, a lot of breaking iron shoplifting. He did some assault and battery b before he was 13. Um, um, I mean, it was also because his father taught him that. His father, Frank, taught his children how to survive by stealing, which ranged from shoplifting, the robbery to... Um, what else was it? What else? I, I don't even know anymore. But um, he was raised to know to do that. That's the only way he knows how to survive. And um, what else is there? He was also a compulsive liar. Um, I think he lied also because he wanted to be famous. He wanted to feel a, he wanted to feel better than, more than what he is. Like when he did the Green Man, and he was boasting about how he assaulted. 300 women um, I think he, he I, I'm pretty certain that he lied um, at the most I think maybe he did like 100 maybe but um, I think he lied just so he could feel like he could one up himself you know and um, yeah I think he, he lied a lot what else what else is there? I'm sorry, I'm taking so long. I'm thinking. Um, compulsive liar. He was very insecure. I think that was also because of he was rejected of sex and he was rejected by a couple of women when he was growing up. Felt very insecure. Um, he cared about his family. I mean, that, that's good. He didn't show much remorse about anything else. Um, he did. Oh, he did fall. He did do one ser serial killer triads. He would uh, get an orange box, orange crate, and you put dogs and cats in it, and you make them scratch them, scratch each other to death all the time. Um, so that's one of those. He didn't do any of the other ones. He wasn't obsessed with fire, and he didn't wet the bed. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. He falls under the. He falls under the um, the specific profile of a serial killer. Um, his adolescence with the whole sexual and then physical abuse, no, the the lack of attention given, and um, yeah, that was that's about it. So that that's what my psychological profile of him is. But I do want to say, I still I don't think he did it. I don't think he's the Boston Strangler. I think Clark Edward Tracy is. And Clark Edward Tracy worked with someone else. I don't know who that someone else is, but I, I'm pre I, I'm dead set on that thought, on that idea that Clark Edward worked with somebody and did did, did all that. So yeah.